Good morning, everyone. I'm Kate Brandt, Google's Chief Sustainability Officer. I'd first like to thank the Asian Development Bank for inviting me to today's event. This is a truly important opportunity for public and private organizations to come together to exchange ideas focused on shared solutions to what we know are some of the world's most pressing issues. And look, I mean, from COVID-19 to the global impact of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, uh, countries on the, around the world are, are grappling with some really unprecedented economic and social upheaval. Uh, but though, you know, we've seen through it all that um, I have to say, I am so encouraged to see how governments and citizens continue to recognize that our warming climate remains a critical challenge and that we are working to make sure our global recovery is a sustainable one. We see the impact of the climate crisis in different ways. When we look at the Asia Pacific region, people have experienced firsthand the devastating effects of things like wildfires in Australia, flooding in Malaysia, typhoons in the Philippines. And given that, you know, it's not surprising that research from organizations like the Economist Intelligence Unit is showing us that the number of people concerned about climate change is growing most dramatically in both engagement and awareness in Asia. And that's notably in places like India and Pakistan and Ind Indonesia as well. And here at Google, you know, our data shows us that over 80% of people say sustainability is more top of mind for them now than it actually was before the pandemic began. So at Google, we see great challenges at us as really opportunities. And since our founding, we've been working hard to take action as a company and to build solutions that tackle climate change. So we were the first major company to become carbon neutral going all the way back to 2007. In 2017, we became the first company of our size to match 100% of our annual electricity use with renewable energy. This is something we've now achieved for four years in a row. And today we are in our third decade of climate action. We have committed to achieve net zero emissions across all our operations and value chain by 2030. And one of the key strategies for us in reaching that target is operating on 24 by seven carbon free energy. We're also working to increase access to clean energy for others. Most notably, we've committed to enable five gigawatts of clean energy in key manufacturing regions like APAC, and we'll do that by 2030. And now beyond this, we're thinking about sustainability in truly every dimension of what we do, from operating efficient data centers, creating sustainable workplaces, and even manufacturing better devices and creating more efficient chains. And we're deploying our technology and resources to support our partners. This work goes far beyond Google. And one great example of this is the Environmental Insights Explorer tool which is helping local governments to track carbon emissions and determine how to reduce them. Now, this tool is available for over 20,000 cities and regions, and it includes places like Japan and Australia. And then if we look at Google Cloud, which is the cleanest cloud in the industry, we are helping businesses like real estate developer LendLease in Australia to meet their goals by reducing their emissions and making their processes and supply chains more sustainable. Finally, we have made what we see as a really bold commitment, which is to help a billion people make more sustainable choices by the end of this year. And we know that our products can be helpful because we see that people are actually coming to Google every day to search for ways that they can live more sustainably. So one example of that is searches for recycling grew by up to 25% in Hong Kong and South Korea while we saw a 70% increase in searches for electric cars and bikes across APAC, including places like India and Taiwan. So we're building new tools in some of our most popular products with the goal of making the sustainable choice an easier choice. So for instance, when people are planning a trip, you know, a lot of us are actually starting to travel more now, they'll now find a number of sustainability focused features. For example, on Google Flights, you can now see the associated CO2 emissions so you can choose a more eco-friendly flight. Or when you're browsing for hotels, you can see ones that are eco-certified by trusted third parties and the sustainability practices that earned them those certifications. 
And then of course, once you get there, you can easily find things like a bike share station or biking directions right within Google Maps. And these are just a couple of examples of how we're using the power of technology to drive significant positive impact. So this really gives you an overview of how Google is not only leading by example, but we're also working to enable our partners and to empower everyone who uses our products. But also we know that there are countless other tools that people are building around the world to help us tackle climate change. And, you know, I'm the former federal chief sustainability officer for the US government. And I've really seen firsthand the positive impact of business, governments, and communities working together. And as we stressed at last year's COP26 Global Climate Conference in Glasgow, when it comes to sustainability, we have a responsibility to work together, to forge new partnerships, and to take action now. So I'd like to share an example of one such partnership. In Indonesia, as you may know, plastic waste poses a major challenge. With 50,000 kilometers of coastline and a lack of widespread public awareness of waste management across the archipelago, most of Indonesia's trash could end up in the ocean. So this is where Gringo Indonesia Foundation comes in. They've been tackling this problem by using technology and we wanna see how we can help them scale the solution. So with the help of Google.org funding, along with the use of Google machine learning, TensorFlow, the Gringo Foundation has launched an app to allow waste workers to track the amount and type of waste that they collect. And this has allowed them to improve recycling rates by 35%. Gringo Foundation is just really one example of how technology can unlock new solutions for sustainability in all aspects of our lives and we are committed to doing more. So I am incredibly proud today that with the support of our philanthropic arm, Google.org, we are launching a $6 million sustainability seed fund in Asia Pacific. Through this fund, we will support nonprofits in Asia, not only with our philanthropic funding, but also technology and Googler's time. And this is really all in an effort to address some of the most pressing sustainability challenges in this region. So we hope that this funding will really help nonprofits to scale their promising technologies that are tackling climate change. This could be things like air quality, water preservation, and increasing access to renewable energy in the region and beyond. So you will hear more updates about this fund in the coming months. I wanted to end by saying that we all have a shared responsibility to save our planet. And it starts by coming together to scale, to scale our collective ambition to address climate change. This is the decisive decade for action. From governments setting strong national ambitions to companies embedding sustainability into every aspect of their business, to all of us committing to a more sustainable way of life. If you're keen to find out more about how technology can help social impact organizations and cities find innovative solutions, I'd like to encourage you to join this afternoon's session on building a more sustainable and resilient world with innovation, which is gonna be at 1.30 p.m. Singapore time, as this is gonna be a great chance to discuss this topic further. I hope you enjoy the rest of this event and thank you so much for having me.